Alright, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, we'll do a bit of a longer recap since it has been a couple weeks since we've been together, but last session, you all procured the materials that you needed to escape from El Terrell. You went out into the streets, found an old abandoned barracks, thoroughly looted it, stripped it down for any sort of supplies that you could use to get to the surface. The device that you came up with was a ballista that would shoot down from the outer edges of this city, essentially an, in, an upside down mountain floating hundreds of feet above the river sticks below, being pulled down by these infernal chains. Using this ballista, you would shoot down a long length of, I believe it was rope or chain, to create a zip line of sorts that you could then use to traverse down to the surface. You were all able to construct that without any issues, and then while some of you flew down, others used that zip line to descend down onto the surface of Avernus. Crossing over the massive blood war raging beneath you, where demons poured forth from the river Styx only to crash against ordered lines and columns of infernal, devilish forces, all armored and armed in uniform, rank and file, all serving Zeriel, the Archduke of this plane, of this lair. After making your way down to the surface, avoiding any of the fiendish patrols that were wandering around the outskirts looking for stragglers and survivors, mainly hunting down any demons that may have gotten past them. You eventually made your way far enough from the battle beneath the city of El Terrell that you decided to start working on making your way towards Fort Knucklebone. Fort Knucklebone being the place that Lulu, having been reminded by visions spoken of by older Ravenguard of a sword and other events of Lulu's past, she was able to recognize a couple of things that Ravenguard had said and sp had spoken of. Namely, a pair of Kenku that had found her and taken her someplace where she was safe for a while. After hearing the descriptions that were given, Gargoth, the Hidden Lord, the Pit Fiend, sealed away inside of the Golden Shield, was able to tell you that he recognized the place that Lulu was describing and that he could take you there, or at least point you into the right direction. You all set out and quickly discovered that Avernus, as a place, was a very ever-evolving, ever-shifting landscape, and that although you had a map, I put in big air quotes, the reliability of exact locations on this map was spotty at best. The cartographer who wrote it, having gone mad sometime during the process of doing so. But nonetheless, you were all able to navigate towards a place that Gargoth and Lulu named as Fort Knucklebone. That is what we're going to go ahead and pick up today. I'll go ahead and reread for you all the description of this place, and we have a handout as well. So. Aptly named. Indeed. Looks like a hospitable place. So, what you all see in front of you now is a fortified compound that sits atop a low plateau, rises out of the crater pocked landscape of Avernus around you all. At the center of the compound is a hill of rust colored stone that resembles a hand clawing up and out of the ground, with gaps between its fingers. A jagged wall made of rock, bones, and metal debris surrounds this hand-shaped hill. Other highlights visible from this distance include a gatehouse, atop which stand half a dozen small figures on watch. They all look down at you eagerly, whispering amongst each other, running across the parapets, pointing at you all as you approach. So that is where we pick up today. So, as you all approach... Fort Knucklebone for the first time, well, first time for most of you. A few dozen feet out in front of the gates, you hear a shrill voice call out from up above. It says, Halt! Who goes there? 
And with that, we're going to go ahead and put you on this map. Let me know if anyone has any problems loading this. It is a huge map with a lot of tokens. If there is any slowdown or anything like that, I can remove some of the tokens to speed things up. You weren't kidding, this map is huge. It's enormous, it's huge. This uh, is this is the on? Fort Knucklebone map. Around the bottom? Yes. Yes. south. The bottom. There you are. Yep, okay, we're on the bottom. So, you see several small humanoids. So they look like kind of crazy looking old scraggly gnomes, some of them. Some of them look like they could be tiny goblins. But they scurry atop this gatehouse here. And they shout down again towards you. Are you deaf? Who the hell are you? Um, Valathon will yell up in... Are they speaking common? They are. They look over towards one another and they start whispering amongst one another again and the other one shouts down at you again in a different language. Anybody speak Sylvan? Haha, -ha, I do. Finally, my one language. <laughs> they shout down in Sylvan. Are you deaf or just dumb? Who are you and what do you want? Uh, she'll respond, uh, well, we're not deaf. Or, or I'm not, at least. Um, and, uh, dumb. And, and I'm not. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, and she'll step forward. Uh, Continuously speaking in Sylvan as well. Uh, is there a problem here? Uh, are we? Are, you, are you, is this your living quarters? Yeah, we own this place. It's ours. You want in? You're gonna have to do what we tell you. Can I have a quick refresher as to why we were coming here? Um, Lulu's memories have led you here. Something about this place can lead you towards finding the Sword of Zeriel. Lulu's not exactly sure what that is, only that Ulda Ravenguard and her shared visions said that finding the sword is what was necessary in order to get Elturel out of here, and that Fort Knucklebone has something to do with that. Uh, I will say in Infernal, I would speak with your master. I would speak with your master? Me. You speak with me. I'm your master, right? And then he, like, he starts who's talking the one, around. Who's the one? Who's the one doing that? Right here. It's like, so you want in, huh? Tell you what, you fill your pockets with sand, and then you can come in. Points towards Bill. Mm -hmm. He told Bill to fill his pockets with sand? Yep. I feel like you shouldn't do it. <laughs> Come down here and I'll fill your throat with sand if you keep running your mouth like that. Gives you double, double, it gives you two very rude gestures, one with each hand. <laughs> Can cut those off too if you want to keep it up. Turns around and moons you. Everyone laughs. All of the red caps and mad caps all over the rooftop. Ooh. All right, all right. Althea is just gonna like get like one of those like really annoyed and angry faces on her uh, as like she starts to glow red and she just like looks up at them and is like, uh, I guess in. Uh, let's see what language we have. Do 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 do. Uh, she'll do it in Abyssal, uh, okay. and sh and she'll just like Abyssal or like, roar at them. Uh, Abyssal. Okay. I do not have Infernal, sadly. Uh, actually, maybe I should do it. Oh, I do have Infernal. Never mind. I'll do it in Infernal. Um, so yeah, I'll do it in Infernal. Uh, I'll just yell out to them. I think that's quite enough. 
and she'll uh, also say, I think it's about time we end these little shenanigans and you let us through now. Make an intimidation check. Like 24. So take the 24? Yep. Okay. All right. So a few of them like immediately leap back behind the wall, shrieking. The one up here at the very top, he cowers down behind it. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We were, we were just playing. We were just playing. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Um, if, if, if that one punches that one in the face, I'll open the gate right now. Who does he point Points to? Points towards Bala, Fawn, and Kroll. Valifon have to hit me, or do I have to hit Valifon? Valifon has to hit Kroll. That is oh, what he's saying. I'll take it. You good with that, Kroll? Yeah, I'm good. Hit me. <laughs> Go ahead and make an arm strike. You even... I mean, or yeah, you can... This is... Go ahead. Yeah, Go even on. if you punch him, even if you punch him, would it even do damage? <laughs> this is hilarious. Because oh, I crit you for zero points of damage. <laughs> Kroll, what are you doing after that? Uh, I'm just kind of going along with the flow, just kind of acting, just pretending like it hurt. I don't know. <laughs> He's he like falls to the ground in exasperation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I fall to the ground. That couldn't have been better. I got a crit on <laughs> <I'm> right. <laughs> So you see a very satisfied look on the little guy's face up there. He's like, yes, yes, yes. Yes, have him as master, have him as king. And he turns around and he says, see what I did? And he falls back off the thing as he's loading to everybody, he lands flat on his ass right there. And as he does, I will approach, uh, approach him right up next to him. And I'll be like, uh, who is the master exactly? Uh, and she like, glares at him. Uh, as he as he continues well, to stutter, Bill is walking up, uh, walking up with a whole bunch of sand in his hand. Oh! <laughs> he gets up. He's like, I, I was only playing. Let him in. Let him in, guys. And a couple, of the, a couple of them poke their head over and just start snickering at him. So as he's, open, as he's backing up towards the gate, he, he backs up into it, his hand's still up, and he starts cowering down as you two advance on him. And right as you're standing right over him, the gate does begin to lift. <laughs> uh, she'll, right, right before he can escape, uh, she'll put his hand on him and be like, Much better. Now, if you'd be so kind, maybe you could show us around. Yeah, yeah, um, um, master. I great, do right. a great tour guide. Excellent. Uh, yep, yep, that's my job. That's what I do here. Excellent. I'll be sure to uh, promote you in front of the others later. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Bill will walk up and still pour a bunch of sand in his pocket. Like, oh, yeah, thanks. Needed the weight. Helpful. Thank you. <laughs> So, as you all make your entrance in, the area enclosed by the rampart is littered with trash, mechanical parts, um, some put together in a way that almost resemble vehicles. There are dozens of small fake creatures milling about, all looking like feral little gnomes. Some of them have this strange black liquid dripping off of their caps. Um, several of them sport tall red caps, the ones that aren't dripping with vile liquor. One that was talking to us. Red cap or black cap? Red cap. Is this like a Nomeo and Juliet situation? I don't think so. <laughs> no, no one got my joke. Okay, I did not. Go. Sorry. Uh, I got it, but. That wasn't funny enough. <laughs> Dang. Dang. <laughs> Even worse. So they are all kind of looking around at you watching you all approach. They don't seem too, like, hostile. They're obviously kind of used to visitors arriving here. 
Can I do like a perception check to see like what's the obvious route and where to go? Uh, sure, go ahead and make a perception check. Valapon is heading straight toward these vehicles. Jeez, we're just throwing eight. down crits today. Nice. Okay, so, um, Bill, as you're looking around, you get the idea that the central, the central area is where most of the activity is taking place. Uh, most of the red caps are going to and out of that area, carrying various objects and whatnot with them as they go. Um, the gate does close behind you all as you make your way in. You can see the red caps and mad caps making their way back onto the uh, back onto the parapets and start looking back out every now and then tossing something random at something on the other side. But um, you can see that the central area is definitely where most of the action is taking place. And Balafon Lulu would be following very, very closely to you as you go. Yep, and I was going to ask her, does any of this look familiar? She's like, yeah, yeah, I, I do remember this place. I don't know too much about exactly what happened here, but the place is definitely familiar. I remember an old granny. She was really nice to me, actually. It was kind of... And as she's saying that, one of the two Kenkus up here on the machine... Huh? One of these guys. Stands up, bolt upright. Oh, where'd he go? Oh, there he went. You moved him up there. Yeah, he got stuck to my marker somehow. But he stands bolt upright in the middle of his machine, waves at your direction, and kind of puts out a hand. It's like almost as if he's motioning to stop. And in a shrill, high-pitched, what sounds like a gnome's voice, says, what a deal! Patience is a virtue! And then in another voice, it sounds like a deep, orcish voice. Can't keep the boss waiting. And then he jumps off of the machine and runs off. Uh, runs off? Mm -hmm. Runs Wait, off towards the center structure. Uh, uh, Lulu's like, oh, just said that she remembers what? this place, and the she did mention during her visions mentioned about two Kenku that rescued her from the Avernian Plains and brought her someplace. Mm -hmm. Do you remember their names? I thought she said something about a granny. She did. Oh. Bill kind of stands cool. upright and in a big intimidating shout goes, "Where's the grandma?" It looks back towards you. Can't keep the boss waiting. So we're supposed yeah. to be following. I was like, I think we need to follow. As you begin to approach, the other Kenku jumps down and holds up a hand. Says, Patience is a virtue. Yeah, Anna's intensely uncomfortable with the mention of a grandma. Greetings. I am Valathon, the Red. This is Evan Star. Says, hello, in a completely off, off, just random voice. And then it opens its beak again and starts releasing the sound that sounds like an engine. Chuck, 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 chuck. And then Lulu looks up and says, that's chuck. I remember chuck. And the Kenku here, who has now been appropriately identified as chuck, nods, nods vehemently. A few moments later, the original Kenku that ran off returns, leading a tall creature. Um, sorry, mm -hmm. could I, I wanted to disguise self to look like a slightly taller version of these gnomes. Okay. <laughs> and then I join the rest of the group. Got it. Okay. So, moments later, the first Kenku returns, leading in a tall creature wearing a long, tattered shift covered in mud and blood. Mold, some other things, probably worse. As well, they all make their way forward, you see in the rear, behind that giant creature, is another creature, similarly, wearing clothing covered in all kinds of detritus, mud and blood and other types of filth. And as she approaches, you can see that this hag's eyes seem to move independently of one e of each other as she approaches. 
her scraggly brown hair hanging in front of those strange eyes that seem to be moving in random, awkward directions. Resting on each of her shoulders is a red-eyed raven. They scrutinize you very judgingly. Just behind her, a hulking creature built of disparate fiendish parts, trudges, moaning, kind of hopping a bit as it walks, like in a weird, strange gait. Then both of the eyes of the hag focus keenly on all of you, and on Lulu, specifically. And she says, my goodness! She croaks, spittle dribbling out of her mouth. Where did you find this treasure? Lulu! Welcome back, Lulu! And she starts charging forward. Lulu is very, just like... She kind of is standing stark still, a little bit scared as to what's happening. But once she start, once the hag starts rushing forward, she sees all of you and pauses for a moment. She says, Do you realize what you have brought to me? Excuse me, so very rude of me. My name is Maggie. Mad Maggie. It is a pleasure to meet all of you. New arrivals, I would say, judging by the looks of you. Indeed. As well, welcome to hell. Now. Glad to be here. The elephant. Is she... Is she real? Is it really who I think it is? The former Mount of Zariel, her closest companion. So it seems. By the gods. You have something of immeasurable value here. The suffering that that poor creature has endured. The torment, the anguish, delectable. Uh, she is not for sale. Oh, I would assume not. Such a precious creature, such a valuable, valuable creature. I would never imagine you would sell her. What is it that you seek? What is it that you need? Maybe we can come out with an agreement that we can all feel good about. Well, if we are going to chat, why don't we find somewhere a little bit more private? Indeed, so I please! I am one to have private talks like this in a more private setting. There's like two dozen madcaps and redcaps all just like standing within five feet of you staring at you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Please follow me. Mickey, Mickey, refreshments for our guests. The giant fresh golem non starts stumbling off as it goes. It's like limping and hopping. A bunch of the madcaps and redcaps are following it around, imitating it and laughing around as it goes. As we begin to follow, I say, these are impressive vehicles. Are they yours? Oh, yes, they are. They are, in fact, all mine. They belong to me and, of course, to the knuckle bones. And as she says that, she raises her arms out and every single person in the entire junkyard shouts at once, knuckle bones. <laughs> Um, as we walk behind her, Anna's going to very uh, uncomfortably follow uh, behind Althea, like hiding behind her. Okay. Still I was going to go over to Lulu and be like, Lulu, make sure you stay close to one of us. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they want to hurt us, though. And as she says that, the one comes up and the one Kanku that, want, that went away originally opens its beak and it starts sounding like a hammer hitting like a piece of metal. And she's like, Clonk! Clonk, I remember you! And Clonk was all like super happy, nodding his head up and down. So, Chucka and Clonk. Alright. Okay. <laughs> I love that. <sighs> After a brief interaction with Lulu, where they kind of dance around, all happy to see each other again. Chuck is going to go back to his machine, and as soon as he hops onto the machine, Chuck and Klonk start shouting back and forth towards one another, pointing at different things on the on the massive engine that they're working on. 
and Maggie says, Shall we? Gesturing inside. Mm -hmm. Let's. What did she call the golem? Mickey. Oh, Mickey, you're so fine. You're huh. so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Mickey. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Oh, I hate them. Thank you for bringing Lulu along, Balafon. I appreciate it. You're welcome. <laughs> so you grab us all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So as you make your way in, um, it's more of a direct workshop. You can see chains and pulleys hanging around. There's several of the various creatures working on there's a motorcycle or two parked around you can see here and as maggie enters in she says out everybody we need the room and most of them disperse almost immediately one of them though doesn't seem to have been listening the one closest to maggie right here is still just trying like crazy to get the tire off of it the rest of the creatures disperse as instructed and Maggie says, we need the room. It nods, like, yeah, yeah, continuing to try and get at the tire. You see it kind of stop, stare at the tire, and then start gnawing on one of the bolts. It's got it. And Maggie's like, ugh, and reaches out one finger and touches it, and it immediately begins to wither away. And so Maggie lets out a very annoyed, ugh, and reaches out one finger and touches the little madcap there and it's like wait, ah! and basically just melts into a little pile of necrotic goop on the ground hmm. wonderful not one of your favorites i take it and oh there a dime a dozen if if you were if if you will so we have the room what is it that has brought you to Fort Knucklebone? We seek the Sword of Serial. Oh, you and many others seek the sword. And she looks at Lulu. She knows where it is, doesn't she? Of course she does. Of course she does. But it is locked. Locked inside of her memory. Well, then there it is, isn't it? I will extract the memories from our dear friend Lulu. All I ask for in return is the right to be there when we do it. The suffering, her memory of the suffering. Mm. To simply be in the presence of such agony. That is um, all. Could, could you explain this process to us a little bit more clearly? Indeed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of speechless and aghast at the moment. Like, <laughs> We must delve into the poor, poor creature's mind. When I say us, I mean all of you, of course. You must dive into the dark depths of this poor creature's mind, her memories, and extract, bear witness to, bring reality to the things that have been locked away. She kind of leans Nothing in. Nothing inside Lulu could hurt me, so. It's like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> a chunk of uh, like a chunk of some sort of bone comes flying out she picks it up puts it in a pouch on her side she will not be harmed no you you however it's very dangerous for you so it sounds to me like this process a lot means that we're somehow going to, shall we say, 
travel into her mind in like an ethereal body and any damage our ethereal body takes could result in real damage to us. Is that what you're trying to say? Precisely. I see. Uh, she'll look towards the others. It seems like this is the right course of action. Um, however, it also seems like this could be something that uh, is going to dig up a lot of hurt from Lulu as well. Don't forget excruciating deaths for each of you should you, should you fail. Since when do we start dealing with hags? So, Gee, look around. Sure. Look around you. How you, honest but... is the, how honest does she seem to me? I mean, I know she's a hag, and I you know you, you can only trust a hag as far as you can you know toss one. But um... you can make an inside check. I have a thing for this. <laughs> if I only could find it. There it is. Okay. Uh, I'll drop my my disguise so I'm uh, very clearly in a cola again. Right. She does not look surprised. She looks over towards you. Just there you are, cousin. Hmm. <laughs> so, Bill, Bill just has a place of come on, say what, cousin? <laughs> All hags are related, <laughs> and uh, as uh, as opposed to the you know how everyone gets offended when people think everyone of one kind of person knows each other. All hags do know each other. That is absolutely <laughs> okay. Uh, Valifon, with your fourteen, um, she seems genuinely obsessed with Lulu, and that is what you get with a fourteen. Um, she seems she seems like she is genuinely. Deeply wanting of Lulu's memories. So, Lulu? Anna, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, Anna Cola first. Okay. So, Anna Cola, Mad Maggie. I I hope that you're not here for anything specific. I am not looking to extend the family currently. Oh, I. That. No thanks. But. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> nothing like that, at least. Uh, we can deal with that later. Um, this is mostly about my friend Lulu. Uh, can I see her hands? Are they openly on, like, can we see her hands? Um, yeah, she's mostly wringing them in front of her, kind of clasping them in the Mr. Burns, like, sinister finger-tapping type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see her hands for most, for, for the most part. Gotcha. Uh, you said this is not going to hurt our friend? There's no harm will come to Lulu. I would never harm such an exquisite source of agony and anguish. She's much more valuable to me, unharmed. She's telling the truth. I, I think as we delve into her memory, she's basically going to relive some of her past as well, which is, you know, traumatic experience. Oh, yeah, no. She will be psychologically yeah. broken, but she won't be physically harmed. Um, Althea no will... Deal. No big deal. Up, up. <laughs> Althea will move up to Lulu and will politely ask if it's okay for us to dig into her mind and try to find uh, the, where the sword is for the greater good. Because mm. I would never invade her mind uh, unwillingly. Lulu kind of drifts up higher and looks Mad Maggie in the eyes and says you're sure this will help us find the sword that we need to help Serial and Maggie oh, <laughs> oh so so sweet yes little one you have my word if you knew where the sword is at any point we will discover its location and you can see your beloved friend again Lulu drifts down. I'll do it. 
Althea, right behind you, you hear, you hear, like, you can hear and feel the breathing of this massive creature down your neck before you can actually, like, see him. But he's just, like, standing, like, three inches behind you, even closer, maybe. He's got a tray out that's, like, about to bump you in the back of the head. (laughs) Althea would just turn around, around, like, unfazed, because she's just, like, used to this, like, or after it's so much already. As it lets out that last exhale. It's got a tray, and it's got several different types of wine and various drinks on it. Althea just like, oh, I thank you. And she takes one. <sighs> completely unchick, completely unfazed. And you won't do anything to sabotage our mission in there, will you? She says, no, of course not. Of course not. A deal is a deal, you see. I simply wish to see her live through it again. <laughs> Ugh. That's, that is very What is your relationship to Zariel, if I may ask? We have a working relationship. I keep the other warlords in check, and she leaves me alone. The other warlords? The other warlords! Seven. Last I checked, myself included. And they don't serve Zariel either? Many of them think that they could usurp her throne, but the fools, they could barely even usurp me if they tried. It would take all of them together to stand even the slightest chance, which is why Zeriel has chosen me to keep them in line. Makes sense. And what is their purpose? They have no purpose. Renegades. Vigilantes. Outcasts. All. So they just seek to survive. And do you have no intent in, of usurping Serial? Too much paperwork. Fair enough. Makes sense. So! Althea will, Althea will put a hand on Lulu and just like, no matter what happens to Lulu, just remember... We are your friends, and we're here up to help you, and even though I'm sure this is going to be a painful looking back in your past, don't forget that you are not alone. Did we have long rest at the end of the last session? I we believe did. so. Okay. Yes, we rolled for it and everything, yes, for the uh, corruption of the <laughs> Um, Althea, as you're saying that, Mad Maggie kind of scooches in, it's like, if you die in front of her, please have somebody write it down. Love her. <laughs> Althea will just turn to her and be like, there's only one man who never got close to killing me. It'll never happen again. <laughs> she kind of goes Bill back. Just kind of chuckle. It's too bad that white dragon almost got you. <laughs> Does it look like Maggie recognizes the shield? She may have glanced at it cursory a couple times. Um, Gargoth would have immediately, as soon as entering this place, turned the shield back into its celestial form. Wouldn't be burying his face right now. Okay. So that he's is... being quiet and yes. intrusive. Yes. So he recognizes her. Oh, yeah. He recognizes the place. Mm-hmm. Does she have a staff on her, by the way? Like, Don't at believe the moment. So. Staff? No, she does not. Like a shalele. She does not. Even without it, without it, it sounds like she's like a level nine spellcaster that we probably wouldn't stand a chance against. So. No, oh yeah, we would all. <laughs> she is, she is I mean, she is she is carrying herself very confidently right now, just kind of moving amongst you, like she is she is not, not concerned. Yeah. yeah, so it sounds like she's one of the top seven warlords in you know hell. She's like so, one of the, and, and she's like the top of those seven kind of thing. Besides Ariel, <laughs> Bill, I think is gonna be absolutely concerned about wheeling and dealing with a hag. I feel like this is gonna end poorly for at least one of us. Yeah, I worry about it too, but well, nothing venture, nothing gained, or so they say. Oh no. <laughs> 
So, as you're all Thank discussing you. this, he says, Yes, yes, a wonderful, wonderful day it will be, indeed, indeed. In exchange for the for the wonderful privilege of seeing this beautiful creature suffer, you will have the conveyance you need to get across the plains. You seek the sword, the sword may be far away. Have you traveled across the plains far? You would not survive long, I don't think. One of these vehicles? Machines, supplies, provisions, assistance. Yes, yes, whatever it is that you need to get on your way, you will have. Well, your offer is generous, and we thank you for it. I'm not sure how generous it is, but... Thank you anyway. You are you are most welcome. It will take me some some time to prepare to prepare the ritual. Some many, many hours. You may wait and rest here. Make yourselves useful throughout the compound. Is there anything in this cauldron? Uh yeah, lots of stuff. Oh. <laughs> can, I, can I look and Interpret what it is, <laughs> like what is you, like is it brewing? Like what is brewing? Sure. Um, as you are looking, you can see several little soaked caps floating inside of it. <laughs> oh. Uh. She walks up. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Dinner. Well, we'll need to dispose of this to prepare the ritual. And she kicks it over, splatters all over the place. Oh. A whole, a whole madcap goes rolling out. Gets up. <laughs> oh. Uh, scurries off. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay no, then. Bill's just got this. We done effed up, guys. <laughs> this is not a good idea here. Is the madcap like okay? Does it? Is it just like? <laughs> is it's it getting cooked alive. Okay? It, it's it's made it out of the out of the garage. Hmm. Fair enough. I like how you run things around here. It's very interesting. So, so you say you need to you need to prepare. Um, you will notify us, I assume. Indeed, don't don't venture too far. Well, uh, do you know any like uh, shopkeepers in the area that we uh, here that we can take a look at and talk to? I, I am afraid Mahadi has a bit of a monopoly on the shopkeepers around here. <laughs> he he'll find you. I see. You wouldn't happen to sell anything, would you? Can Valifon, Kroll, and Althea make insight checks, please, or perception, either one. Well, that's going on. Can I totally size up this flesh column? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? Yeah, I was going to be asking if I recognize or... that name she dropped. No, oh, three. Okay. Valifon, with a 14, you heard a tiny little gasp come from next to you when she mentioned the name Mahadi. Bill, as you kind of look over I'm... and size up the flesh golem, it looks back at you and lets out this weird smile coming around the flesh tube in his face. <laughs> Ooh. Such a lovely creature. Can I make a check as well? For what exactly? I'm not sure what everyone else was making a check. There's a couple different checks going on here. There's uh, There was one to see um, Lulu's response to the name Mahati. Uh, we've got that one covered. Oh. The other one was sizing up the flesh gold. That's the one that Bill was making. Gotcha. Should gotcha. I see if I can take him or not? <laughs> I thought you were like flexing and getting him to flex. So you could like. <laughs> oh my god! Like what? You know, you walk up to him with your chest out, and he's kind of like. Mm. Bill, <laughs> with your eight insight, you are fairly certain that you are stronger than this guy. Perfect. <laughs> Uh, Give him a good slap on the arm. I like you. You look fun. <laughs> and he hits. He gives you a slap on the arm too. Oh boy. Uh, Maggie. A uh, one second. That's a twenty to hit, Bill. 
I was saying, how much oh. uh, damage do I get? Yep. 16 bludgeoning. Uh, oh, yeah. And he jumps up and down a little too hard, and you see him jumping away, holding his right foot. Ah, ah, ah. When he gets to about there, a large group of red caps and mad caps surround him and start jumping up and down. Like, ha, 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 do the Mickey, do the Mickey. And they all start hopping on one foot, dancing around him as Mickey shouts. Can Anna I throw... Uh... I was going to say, throw a handful of good berries at you. Uh, oh, we're not even there yet. To... I want to, as he's hopping on that leg, I want to try and lift that leg up and knock him over. <laughs> knock him down. Oh. Um, go ahead oh, no. and... We'll make a dexterity saving throw for Mickey. Uh, danger sense. Thank God. <laughs> oh no, no, I meant the I meant the flesh golem is going to make a saving throw to try and avoid you. Oh, very. Thank God, because I was like, oh Jesus, I'm gonna get crushed. Okay. So, Bill, as he's hopping away, one foot up in the air, you're going to try to trip him. I'm like, uh, as he's the foot's up in the air, I'm going to like try and grab it and lift that foot up to up, upend him. Okay. Um. So what do you want me to roll yeah, for Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking just make an unarmed attack. Jesus. I'm just going to roll a d20 because I don't know. No, I'm not proficient in this, so it would just be my strength modifier. I don't you know are what to roll an for an unarmed sure. attack. You are proficient. It's just like a regular attack roll. For, for you, at least, since you attack with strength, I think. <clears throat> but I, uh, I guess my question is, I don't know where to click on my character. Just go ahead and just go and roll a d20, and we'll add your strength mod and your proficiency to it. Okay. So, he flips onto his ass. Oh, oh God. Arr, arr, arr. Mad Maggie glowers at you. Peel just lets out a roar of laughter. I really like this guy. He's good. <laughs> Can we tell uh, why, he's uh, why Mickey is limping? When his feet are up in the air? Make a medicine check. Press up. I got it right here. I mean, you want to look? I guess. <laughs> Can I help since he's, uh, I'm literally holding that foot there. Sure. Go ahead and make a medicine check for yourself as well. So, Bill, as you've got that foot, Mickey's on his back. You can see him starting to roll around like he's about to attack you, but then he sees that you have his foot and you're looking at it and he kind of makes a very pathetic sound as you notice a very large chunk of white sharp bone sticking out of the bottom of his foot can i take one of my small knives and kind of like flick it out like dig it out like it's i'm assuming it's like a, a sliver right uh you all remember that big white devil that you fought back in uh el Toro, back in the city the bone devil mm -hmm. it's uh, one of it's a spine it's that looks very similar to one of those then I'll take my knife and kind of use my thumb and like try and get it out of its foot. Looks my down. immediate assumption was that it was was that it was his bone. My bad. <laughs> Thank God, otherwise this is gonna be real painful. He looks up <laughs> towards you. Looks back towards his foot. Kind of gingerly sets it on the ground. Gets up to his feet. Starts jumping up and down like all happy. And then it's like, and it turns to look out the door. Mad Maggie, as Mickey begins stalking away, Mad Maggie says, Oh, he seems to have taken a bit of a shine to you. He comes out to here, and he's hopping on one foot, like, oh, obviously feigning, like doing a very terrible acting job. Like he's holding his foot, he's like, oh, oh, hopping up and down one foot, and he's surrounded, he gets surrounded by all these mad caps and red caps, and they start jumping up and down around him, hopping on one foot, Yelling, do the Mickey, do the Mickey! Like, they're all just making fun of him for being, for hopping around on one foot for so long. And then he, as he gets, like, about a half a dozen or so around him, he sets his foot down very slowly. 
and just absolutely begins stepping on, smashing, hurling them into the air. You see a few of them begin running away, and he sprints off after them. You hear screaming, things crashing, piles of junk falling off in the distance. Karma has come to the medcap, madcaps, I guess. I really like him. He was fun. We should do that again sometime. <laughs> uh, Maggie, uh, you mentioned there was a monopoly on uh, the merchant, the, the economy, essentially. Uh, would you happen to sell anything? I know uh, we tend to be quite fond of selling things. I, I I don't I don't want to step on any toes, you see. I leave the mercantile aspect of things strictly strictly to to Mahadi. When she says that name again, I am watching Lulu. She shrinks down, her yellow golden hide kind of paling a bit as she shrinks down behind you. In Celestial, very quietly to Lulu, I don't know what this person did to you, but you are safe. Can I do some sort of, like, check to... I don't recognize this Mahadi name. I don't think I know who it is. Um, The only people that might oh, recognize the name are came? people that have spent a long time studying Avernus. I think only one person here falls into that category. Then that'd be I, me, and, I'm, and I am wondering if I recognize the name. Go ahead and make a history right. check. With guidance. Okay. Name sounds familiar. With guidance for three. Okay. The name sounds familiar. Um, it does ring some bells, and you get a brief flash of a name. The Wandering Emporium. You don't remember too much about it as it is a very specific thing that happens down here but from what you remember and from what you remember from your reading mahadi is the proprietor of a place called the wandering emporium it is the only true merchant in avernus the only licensed vendor if you will in all of the nine hells it is run by a very powerful fiend by the name of Mahadi. Okay. And he finds us? It's, it's not like he's at Knucklebone, he's somewhere? It is a it's wandering, wandering. emporium by the very literal meaning of the word. It wanders around. It's never in one place for very long. I think Hal's moving castle is my guess. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say that. It's just uh, some nomadic thing. No, wait, that's what Oh, I imagine Maggie's making a check then. Yeah. So oh, as man. she spoke that word and and uh, Valifon, you notice Lulu. Maggie also notices Lulu's reaction. She says, Met the proprietor of the place, have you? Her voice and mannerisms change a bit. He wouldn't happen to be searching for you now. Yeah, you seem to think that she is of immeasurable value. My guess is a fiendish merchant might agree with you. She nods and says, My interest in the creature is unique. Well. She knows Mahadi. Be careful. His relationship to the Archduke is far more open than mine is. Anyway, I have much work to do, and there is much work out there. Do what you can, will you be a dear, and help out an old lady with the chores around the place while I prepare for you, will you? Shall we sweep? No, no. 
Just head on out there, I'm sure. I'm sure some work will present itself. There's always work to be done here. Good elf is so hard to find. Bill, still very untrusting, just marches out. <gasps> Do it, Lou! Anacola, before you leave, she turns towards you. Cousin, wait. Why have you come here? What brings you here? You are no noble adventurer looking to right the wrongs of the world. Why have you come to this dark place? Okay, I have to word this carefully because I'm also bound to literal honesty when speaking to her. <laughs> um, well, I've come with... Uh, people I consider to be comrades, uh, faithful ones at that. Um, and they seem to have business uh, uh, on the the, the plains of uh, the, pla uh, the various plains of Avernus. Um, and I am choosing to assist them with that. <clears throat> Very well then. And there's also a few things that I might be looking for, um, on the side. Looking for? Uh, something, uh, my mother might have displaced at some point or another. Something that was within the city when it fell? Perhaps. I'm a... No more of something that was taken from the city, something valuable to those like us. Mm -hmm. When we have completed our business with your friends, if things have gone well, perhaps I can help you find what it is that you are looking for, the thing in the city that you've... that you don't want to share Hmm. That'd be very amenable. But thank you uh, for the offer. Uh, I'll definitely uh, get back to you on that then. Uh, well, have fun with your gnomes or what have you. What, whatever these may be. Uh, and whatever potions you may brew. Thank you. I will send for you all when I am prepared for the ritual. Althea will just like uh, yell back, are you coming, Anacola? Yeah, 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 I'm coming. Um, and she'll just give uh, Maggie um, a look of um, I guess um, suspicion uh, um, before making her way out. I'm back, I'm back. She shouts as, you're, as you're leaving. I can't wait for you to meet the rest of the family, dear. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you know how family are. Uh, Althea's <laughs> like, I don't actually. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, she just, she just kind of like turns a blind eye to it and just like walks away. <laughs> oh, no. Have we, have we found to work yet? Have they put us to work? So, as you all make your way outside, there's various different things going along, going around here. Valifon has already approached Chucka and Clonk, who are feverishly working away on this on this device here, and in various different I'm voices. To know what they're doing? Um, you hear the word "demon grinder" coming up over and over and over again, and they refer they're referring to the to the machine they're working on. Um, it's clear to you after a while of watching them that. The device that they are working on is, in fact, this machine, and they call it the Demon Grinder. So, yeah, that is what they're working on. They have the engine compartment up. They are feverishly working away at it. You see one of them raise what looks like a giant wrench and smack something, and this gout of steam comes up, followed by what sounds like hundreds and thousands of people screaming. That goes on for a while, and he's like, Argh! and he covers it back up and Screws it shut, the screaming stops, the steam stops. 
something wrong? They look over towards you and in, again, various different voices. They do say that it's broken. Um, anybody that would like to can make a intelligence check, arcana, investigation, whatever it may be to try and figure out what's wrong with the machine. Because Chuck and Clunk cannot. Did those Are sound we, uh... like... Go ahead. I was going to say, did those sound like uh, human or infernal voices? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Are we, like, lining up here to hit the machine? Because I think Bill would be for that. Yeah, you know, Valathon is trying to figure things out, so he's definitely going to use guidance on himself. Okay. okay. Excellent. I, um, I don't. You immediately spot that one of the gears inside of the engine is missing several of its teeth. And the closer that you inspect, it appears that this was organic in nature, whatever part was used. Well, there's your problem. <laughs> Both of the Kanku immediately hop over and look down towards it, and then they look up and start shouting at each other, pointing fingers, giving blame, and then they point back at it. And then they look towards you and give you a little golf clap each. And they Do look you have towards... A as you say that, you hear an inhuman roar come from what sounds like a few meters just outside of the gate. Both Kanku, both Kanku perk their ear up towards the sound, look back towards you and repeat the sound. What was that? They impart onto you that the part that they're looking for here is a gear fashioned from the spines of a Hezrau, a specific type of demon that you all have probably at least heard of after your after your research at Candlekeep. They explain to you that they need the spines of a Hezrau to repair this particular gear. Is that one outside the gate? Like standing outside the gate, really? You hear another roar sound. It appears that they're fighting over something. Like, you can hear blows landing, shrieking, stuff like that. And they look over towards you, and they say, Scavengers. Garbage. It attracts them. Um, send Ebonstar up and look through his eyes as he peeks over the gate. Oops. There is I don't want to move all of us. I just want to move him. There is, in fact, a pair of Hezrau fighting with each other to the southwest of the complex over here. Oh, Evanstar can't get past it. There you go. <laughs> Oh, we fought one of those in the that came that they accidentally summoned in the down in the catacombs in Baldur's Gate. They're fighting with each other, feeding on various hunks of what looks like animal pieces, fiendish pieces, things like that. They're pulling out of a trash heap right there. And Valvon tells everyone that they're outside, out front. Yeah, um, so, um, Bill's gonna guys, grab the we need some gear. parts from those things to fix this. Wanna go kill a couple of demons? I'm always in favor of killing demons. I'm down to kill a couple of demons. Uh, mm -hmm. first, though, Bill, take this. Um, and she's going to hand him a bowl of salad. Um, of which is just a lot of mushrooms. It's only mushrooms. It's only There's mushrooms. <laughs> there is nothing else mushroom in the salad. salad. There's like a single leaf on it, and it's like dead. <laughs> it's a withered leaf, uh, and that's <laughs> that's it. Uh, but it will bring you back to full health. Bill, it's just like thanks. Like, You're welcome. Let's oh, hey. some like bacon bits on it. He's like delicious. Thank you. <laughs> so, I am gonna cast guidance on myself so that I'll have it ready for the initiative roll. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gather you all coming. by the gate. Gathering you all by the gate. Moving your tokens. Let's just say, uh, Bill right. grabs the uh, red cap he poured dirt in and 
puts them so, over the gate and tells them to open it up. Nice. I okay, you want to help us kill these demons? They're like, they immediately, a, a few of them, oh, that sounds dangerous. A few of them, oh, I got a lunch break. Jumping off the gate, they're all scattering. Wait, wait, wait. So before, before that happens, I went to the gate before uh, they were all talking with them. Huh? And what I wanted to do was actually gather all of them together and be like, all right, everyone come here. I need to teach you all how to properly intimidate and or get people to do things outside of the gate. Come closer, come closer. Make a persuasion or intimidation check. Fourteen, you get like three or four of them to show up. All right, so she so she gathers them close. She's like, "Look, the others who didn't come are fools. You are wise to come and seek my guidance. After all, he nods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the key to getting people to fear you or do things for you is she leans real close." is to make them afraid of you to the point where even your gaze, your aura that you have about you, as she begins to like look extremely intimidating and starts to glow red as well, and get them to truly realize that they are completely outmatched. And and that's when everyone else kind of joins in and like everyone else scatters. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they, they just book in every direction. The two, one, the one of them, one of them that you, uh, the one that you were looking right at, the one that was like, yeah, 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 he runs off and looking behind him, doesn't see where he's running, and he turns just in time to see somebody testing a very unique weapon on one of these on one of these machines. It's a series of saw blades in the front of it, and you hear the engine rev just as the one that you were looking right at turns in time to run headlong into it and come out of a red mist as a red mist in the back. Ah. Ooh. Woo-hoo. And these Damn. appear to be fake creatures, right? Yes, Not... they are in fact fake creatures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She'll just kind of look at everyone else and be like, ah, oh, you scared them off. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's go ahead and take our break. And when we come back, we'll head out to fight those Hezro. All right, so welcome back, everybody. You've just spent your first half hour to an hour at Fort Knucklebone, meeting the locals, conversing, leaving your mark on a few lives here. And as Mad Maggie prepares her ritual to extract Lulu's memories, you find yourselves agreed to do a job. A little bit of service for a cup for the uh, two Kenku, Chukka and Klonk. They need a part that can only be harvested from the body of a Hezrau, a particularly nasty category of demon. And there just so happens to be two of them fighting over scraps out in front of the junkyard. So, put you all on the other side of the gate as the madcaps and redcaps lift the portcullis just enough for y'all to squeeze underneath and then drop it right behind you. Oh, there they are. They do actively trade blows among one another every now and then. What do y'all want to do? They look injured. They look a little bit injured, each of them, yeah. Okay, they're quite a few rounds away. Should we we should try and sneak up to them? <laughs> I'm going to sneakily move up to about here. Okay. Y'all can move about that far without having to make a check. And at that point, um, I will enter play, play song. Hmm. Yeah, I already entered my spore and everything. Yeah. Um. Uh. Okay. What can I do over here? Have a plan, or shall I just get their attention? I mean, I can just run at him. Um, how, how steep is this rock? It's it's almost flat. 
Oh. You, can, you can see them over it. I mean, okay. does everyone here have range attacks? I can reach them. Uh, no. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah, I guess not, Bill. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bill's like, I can huck a knife at him. <laughs> That's what I got as a knife to throw. That's it. I'm good at melee. Hmm. Bill gets tired of this. He just starts walking towards them. Yeah. Yeah, I'll follows. Dash. I'll dash towards them and run and then also Misty Step. Right. We're just gonna fast, fast pass over there. Move so, to here. I'll pass that extra meal. Get on myself. Once Bill and Althea get about thirty feet away from them, they both kind of look up from their meal of garbage and body parts, and they drop all the detritus that they were carrying and begin stalking towards all of you. So that is when Bill and Althea collectively get about thirty feet from. So that's good enough, right there. All right, everyone, so they look up towards you, drop the hunks of meat, body parts, and garbage that they were carrying, and appear like they are much more in favor of some fresh meat. So let's go ahead and roll initiative. Yes, finally. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Shit, we, had, we still have an old initiative up. Okay, Bill, what was your initiative? 20. Okay, Anna Cole, what was yours? I didn't roll it yet. It doesn't. Okay. It looks blank for me. It's because yeah, you haven't rolled it yet. Blank. I say it looks fine for me, too. Wait, where did my initiative go? It was there. I think. And I did say that I had guidance on myself, so my initiative is actually a 23.16. Okay. Once you've all rolled, Wait. let me know what you got. Uh, yeah. So, Bill, you had the 20. Uh, Althea, what was yours? I uh, was the 20 as well. 19.12? Alright, it'd be 2012. Jeez, we crushed it. Okay, I see. And Nicole, what was yours? 16.14. Yep. Balafon, what was yours? 23.16. Roll. Jeez, guys, we crushed it. 6.13. Ooh, big numbers. My man, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everyone's Somebody's on their good stuff. And here come the Hezra. Okay. All right, Valifon, you're up. Okay. Um. Bonus action. Cast Shadow Blade at third level. And then I'm going to move 10, 20, 30. 40 and make sure that distance of my move slightly out of move slightly different than that. I didn't move to here. And um, what's the lighting conditions out here? It's a uh, considered brightly lit. Considered brightly lit. Okay. Oh wait. It all yes, Avernus it's all dim. dim. Yeah, so we we went. We're gonna go oh. ahead and run with that. So it is all dim light unless there's a light source somewhere. So all dim. Okay. So, um, with my first action, I will be throwing my shadow blade. Interesting. At okay. the one that's closest to me, um, and that is a crit. Nice. No booming damage, but that is. 43 points of damage. <laughs> right. It reels Jesus. and shrieks. And then I will cast a chill touch at it. 19 hit. It does. For nine points of damage. Um, it's not Can a we just dead. pack it up and back <laughs> in the fort yet? Or what? <laughs> Can you attack with Shadow Blade as a bonus action? I summon Bl Shadow Blade as a bonus action. I have two at 
attacks the oh, shadow yes. blade, my and then bad. I can cast a cantrip as my second attack. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, you're right. My bad. My bad. So that's it for me. <laughs> Bill. All <laughs> uh, right. That's gonna be hard to follow up. You can walk over the rock, but it is difficult terrain to do so. I got those uh, spider slippers oh, now. It don't perfect. matter. Yep, all good. I'll just uh, start running at him. I'm going to go after the one that's more healthy. Running at him, and as I'm running towards him, I'll rage. And I'll also pull out my fillet knife and I will try and stab him. Okay. We'll reckless attack this guy. That is certainly a hit. 17. Reckless giving you advantage for sneak. Yep. And then my uh, second attack, I will attempt to grapple him. It's athletics check result is a 17. Roll a d20. Oh. oh. You tie. I'll roll another d20. Okay. You are not bop, able bop, to grab it. First time I've lost. Bound to happen eventually. Wait until you try to grapple like Zerial or something. That'll be funny. It's going to happen. <laughs> that will be funny. <laughs> I mean, it would be pretty funny to watch her burn a legendary resistance on something like that, though. Although, I guess it's not a saving throw. So. Oh, yeah, she can't. Okay. All right, anything else from Bill? Oh, that's it. Move, oh, action, and bonus action. All right, uh, let's see here. Wait, 30. Alright, well, I can't really get in front of Alphon. So I guess we'll just go 5, 10, 15. Start making our way towards them, and we'll just start Eldritch Blasting them. Okay. We will target the close one here. Both hit. So eight and so five. Eight. Yep, eight and five. That's it for Which me. One? Which one are you hitting? The far one over here. Okay, the one I built. Yep, that's it for me. Anacola. All right. Okay, so this is difficult terrain, so I can get to here, and then. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'll then Misty step to right here. Yep, right yeah. there. Um, and I'll make one more foot up in a second, and then I'm just going to punch this guy with my quarter staff. <laughs> Assisted punch. Yeah. Uh, 17 is a good hit, 26 is even better. Yep, uh, so it's 9 uh, magic bludgeoning, and then 5 necrotic. Uh, and that is all I can do for him. All right, it's going to bring us to Lulu. Uh, real quick side note here. Has anybody watched any of the YouTube videos that have used dark mode, like Esper Genesis or anything like that? I actually haven't watched nope. the Esper okay. Genesis ones. I've listened to them. So. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how much turning on dark mode affects visibility on YouTube because it looks great right now. Okay. All right. That brings us to the Hezraus. And you all, oops, you all were kind enough to bring meals to them. They are going to fully take advantage of that. Yep. Anacola, one of them is going to approach you drooling. You can see it's, you can see it's ribs through its stomach. This thing obviously hasn't eaten in days 
ravenous. It is going to approach you and it has to make a con save. Make a con save. Hey, it's a better damage die. It's a better damage die now too. Two d six. Okay, it fails. It's a sizable amount of damage. Yay, nine necrotic. Okay. Okay, now to attack. Yep. Here it comes. It's going to swipe at you twice with its claws first, with a fifteen and a twenty-six on the second hit. The twenty-six definitely hits. Ten slashing. It then rears down and attempts to take a big old bite at you. Yum. That is only an 11 to hit. Okay, that misses. The second one All is right. going for Bill. Bill it is a 22 yeah, and a um, 21 to hit. Yeah, they're going to hit. For 8 slashing and 11 slashing, 19 total, halved down to 9. And then the bite. The bite is a 20. 14 piercing, half down to 7. Roll, you are up. Alright. So, I will move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 down to here. And then I'm going to dash for another 30. Yeah. So five. Just up to there. And there's really... Nothing else I can do, I don't think. Wrong. Yeah, I'll just I'll just wait. Okay. Uh you could action surge and kick some ass if you wanted to, but I understand if you don't want to use that just yet. I'll, I'll save okay. on, I'll save it for right now. Got it, Valfon. Um Valfon is going to move to here. Ebonstar is going to move to here. Ebonstar will give the help action to the next person that tries to attack this one. Okay. Um, Valifon is going to attack first with Booming Blade on that guy. So 23, I assume, hits. Does. So that'll be 29 points of damage. 23 Psychic, 6 Thunder. And then second swipe. 19 hit. hit. 19 does. For another 13 psychic. Okay. That's it for me. Bill. So he did get the booming blade on the one behind him. Mm hmm. So. Oh, I'm sorry. One, one thing before we continue. Um. Valifon, I do need you to make a constitution saving throw against this thing's stench. Okay. 19. Okay. Bill, as we get to your turn, as you approach this thing, starting your turn within 10 feet of it, you get that overpowering stench of decay and rot and various other horrible things. I do need you also to make a constitution saving throw. Go team. <laughs> Bill, you are unfortunately poisoned until the start of your next turn. <laughs> Malifon, you are immune to the stench for 24 hours. Good to know. Uh, quick rules question. Uh -huh. uh, if I grappled him and moved him, Booming Blade go or it's on your own? No, right? Booming Blade only goes if he voluntarily moves. Got it. Okay, I'm going to... Of this one in front of me, I could get advantage now from the owl. You have yeah, yeah. several instances of advantage, but poisoned does cancel that out, so it would just be a straight roll. Okay, we're going to try and stab him again with my fillet knife. Hold on here. My roll 20 is not working. I got to re let me refresh it here. Sorry. Okay. No worries. It wasn't, it wasn't letting me click anything. Okay. 
Okay, 19's a good hit. And then same thing following up, I'm gonna try and grab one. All right, you do get him. He is grappled. Yes. That's it, that's all I got. Okay, Althea. All right, uh, Althea will walk forward another 15 feet. And she'll start attacking with melee now. There we go. Okay, 17's a hit. Pick 12. Alright, and after hitting it, uh, she just kind of like glares at them and is like, Come fight me if you dare. And that's your turn. <laughs> um, taunting it? Any mechanical taunt, or is it just. Just, just flavor. Okay. Anacola. Alright. I think I have to make a con save. Yes, you do. We established this last time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. Okay. Hey. That is a success. <laughs> you are immune to the stench. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll just hit, oh wait, I'm gonna change them. I'll hit this one. Okay. Oh, okay, it... uh, yep, so that's, uh, nine, uh, I'm gonna hit it again. Sixteen's a hit! Nice, okay, so that's eleven from there. So... Yeah, six, six of that unarmed strike, I think, was non-magical, though, so... Oh, yeah, it is non-magic, my bad. Okay. He gets three hit points back. Okay. Uh... Yep, that's all I can do. Lulu is going to let out a little trumpet! I'm coming to help, friends! And she is going to do a trumpet of sparkles. gonna go into Althea's space, or? No? Otherwise, uh, otherwise Althea's in trouble. Oh, no! You, you know, that is... That is... I don't think Lulu would understand that Althea is not a good... <laughs> uh, actually, she would remember she, that, because yeah, you had discussion before. with her already. <laughs> Did you? Okay. Yes. Well, she's also tiny, so she can go into Althea's space to do it. Okay, she's gonna time. land on your shoulder. That works. Cone? Um, how big is the cone? It's big. I think it's like 60 feet. At least 30. <laughs> I'm checking right now. Trumpet! 30 foot cone. Alright. <laughs> hey. Haha. <laughs> and Nicole, you have to make the save too? I am not a good creature, so I'm not immune to it. Poor Lulu. She's doing her best. <laughs> I don't have disadvantage because I'm not evil, but I'm, I still have to do it. Okay. Lulu has, fall has not fallen in with the greatest of people. <laughs> she has not. <laughs> okay. Roll. Uh, I will... Yeah, I'll use my inspiration. Okay. <laughs> so I don't... Oh, I still take 11. And that can be heard out to a range of 600 feet, so... Yep, it can. Everything knows. Everything knows. She just... They both fail. Nice. Lulu jumps off of uh, Anacola's shoulder and begins flying around. 
Okay. He is going to provoke an opportunity attack, as Lulu does not have flyby. Fly she does not. I thought she did, but she does not. Oh. She needs it. She does. <laughs> flyby would be a really good ability for her to have, but she does not have flyby. It does miss. Okay. I was ready with the silvery barbs. <laughs> Must protect the Lulu. Right. Back to the Hezraus. We got one claw for Bill. Actually, Bill, you have this thing grappled, don't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Two claws for Bill. Get some. Oh. Uh, Bill, it is in fact going to get some. It is 25 on the first hit. Damn. A crit on the second. Silvery barbs right. to crit. Okay, silvery barbs in the crit. So it is 10 slashing for the first hit. Reroll on the I second hit. Now. It's only 11 to hit for the second hit. Yeah, that's a fail. Okay, and then it's going to try to bite you in the face. No. I have Sentinel. I'd like to make an attack, please. Oh, okay. Okay. You have advantage. Hit. Yes, I hit. Yep. Oh, nice. Another 10. Okay, it does miss you with the bite, Bill, so it is only that original 10 slashing you took. Did you half that already, or do I need to? Uh, that is not halved yet. Okay. This one here is going to turn, and it's going to be a claw for Anacola. 22 to hit with that claw. Ouch. Nine slashing. A claw for Crawl. 25 to hit with that one. 10 slashing for Crawl. Yep. And a okay. bite for Valifon with a 19 to hit. Miss. Right. Crawl. All right. So, Crawl is going to take his battle axe and attack the one right in front, right there. But before he does that, he'll go into a rage. Okay. Let me get my... So we go into a rage. I will... Yeah, let's let's do it. I'll do a superiority die to try to do a trip attack. Okay. And there we go. Okay, that's a hit. Okay. All right. Crawl, it does also fail its strength save. So as you swipe down, you take its leg completely off, just below the knee joint, falls onto its back, driving your axe into its face. It does die. Oh, yeah. Anything else from Kroll? Oh, Kroll, I'm sorry. I do need a, a, a constitution saving throw from you. Sorry, my my mic got muted. Sorry, yeah, I'm doing a, another attack against this guy okay, right let's here. Get, for... let's, like, let's get that con save first. Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen is a fail. Roll, you are poisoned. Luckily, all of your attacks have been high enough, even at disadvantage, to not matter. So, that is still a hit. Okay. So, damage... Okay. 12. And, yeah, let's, let's just go ahead and do action search. Okay. And we'll battle X again. That's I will nice. use my I'll use my inspiration. Since you already have disadvantage, inspiration would only give you that straight. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot I'm poisoned. Alright, so one more. Oh, good hell. Piece of shit. That's a hit. There we go. 
check. For 11. All right. Balafon, you are immune to the stench. You're up. Yep. So I'll come to here, and we'll start with a booming blade attack for a crit. Nice. For 30, 43, plus 9, 52. Uh, how do you kill it? Um, so that's a whole bunch of psychic and thunder, mostly psychic damage, so I'm just picturing implosion of oh. this thing. <laughs> okay. As it just shrieks and implodes upon itself. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, is anyone injured? I don't think it's scary. <laughs> uh, I've made a couple. They of look a little green, but yeah, I've made a couple of salads in case anyone's interested. And <laughs> and she's just going to eat six of her good berries because she had a shit ton from yesterday. <laughs> Bill will begrudgingly take one of the salads again. <laughs> He has to. Oh god, he's yeah, so sick some. of it. So sick of it. <laughs> but I'll uh, I'll use one of my treats to add some uh, nice uh, meat flavor on top of it. Yeah, I was gonna say. I imagine he has like spices and stuff that he sprinkles on it. <laughs> uh, so how many missing hit points do you have? Do you have Bill? Uh, that requires math. Hold on. Uh, eighteen. <laughs> All right. And crawl. I got ten. All right. Yeah, Bill's salad was huge. Poor guy. It, <laughs> it already <laughs> tastes disgusting, and then we're also in hell, which makes it taste even worse. Indeed. Uh, and then I have twenty left, and I'm gonna try and not use these, and except if like someone goes down. I gather you all up to take you back in. Um, the part that you need is readily visible here. Um, it's just a spine cluster. looks very similar to what you saw Chunkka and Clonk working on. So, that back in hand. Oh. As you all approach the gate. Oh. Uh, could I also have taken... Um... Sorry, could I retroactively see if I can find any, like, gland that, like, produced the disgusting stench? So, go ahead and make a survival check. Uh, hey! Nice. Okay. Um, so you're able to determine that it wasn't a gland that made this stench. Just mostly their impressive BO. Um, <laughs> so, with a 22... I fillet their armpit or something? I was gonna just... say, yep. With the 22, you could certainly do that. And we'll say... We'll do another check when you have some downtime. So just go ahead and put the... Uh, whatever you want to label that as in your inventory. <laughs> <laughs> um, and when you all have some downtime to just uh, sit down with Alchemist Supplies or Poisoner's Kit or something like that, we'll see what you can do with that. What was that uh, creature called? Hezrau. H-E-Z-R-O-U. All right, thank you. Okay. When you all get back to the gate, a mad cat pops up. Password! I swear to God, I will cut your throat if you do not open this gate. Good password! It jumps down and opens the gate. <laughs> I was about ready to throw the shadow plate at him. So. Oh my God, I knew it was coming. I, I, w I was hoping he would try to intimidate us because I was so ready for that. <laughs> I was just anybody who... who, who, who like got in our way i was just gonna kill him <laughs> jeez what's wrong with you guys so <laughs> weird uh... <laughs> got like a party of like three quarters of us are evil so i'm not terribly <laughs> surprised actually evil uh, like everyone else who's like faking evil apparently <laughs> am i the only person in this group with an actual good alignment besides <laughs> lulu i don't know you did uh... murder, <laughs> murder that innocent fang kind of <laughs> I am one to judge, uh, definitely. 
Malphon, you headed in? Oh yeah, absolutely. Sorry. I was pouring more scotch. I'm so jealous <laughs> of that, by the way. Hey. This sh sherry cask finish is good. <laughs> okay. Uh, bonk, uh, cronk, we got your, we got your, 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 what was it? What, uh, Hezrao spines. spines. Yeah, they look up from their machine and just like frantically start pointing, pointing down at the machine for you all to bring it on over. Tools and see if I can help. So they take the um, they take the piece and insert it into the machine, but it immediately detonates with this surge Ooh. of just dark evil energy. It doesn't really do any damage, but it launches itself out of the out of the casing, and they're looking at it and they point at it and they, they don't seem to understand why it didn't work. Valifon being the closest one there, why don't you go ahead and make an Arcana check? Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and use my inspiration. Fantastic. So with a 27, you can determine that this piece of this demon is too negatively charged. There's too much demonic energy to it. It needs to be, it needs to be cleansed somehow before it can be used in this machine. Anybody got a bless spell? Yep. I, yeah, I, I could probably cleanse it. Oh wait, bless spell? No, sorry, my bad. <laughs> I, I, I could cleanse it. With the twenty-seven Valophon, you're able to figure out that a bless protection from good and evil, and basically any sort of any sort of spell. Oh, or, or I could I could wash it off with holy water, or I would that dissolve some it? Holy water on it. With your twenty-seven, it, it would destroy it to do that. It needs to be yeah. a spell of first level or higher. Okay. Yeah, out there, or yeah, third to me, Alcala, Anacola, whoever. Or, wait, you can get it back on rest. You do it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> 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 I will still cleanse gonna it. Sprinkle holy water on. <laughs> Completely and thoroughly as I cast. Da, da, da. We'll just say bless on it. Yeah. At second level. So it's extra oh, blessed. Yeah, you have blessed. <laughs> it's extra blessed. <laughs> okay. Alright. So the two Kenku look at it approvingly take it from you, and insert it into the housing, and you all hear that shrieking sound again, but it more sounds muffled, like it's hiding, like the shrieking and the screaming is hiding behind something. But, um... Can I tell what that shrieking... it really is? Make a religion check. A religion check. That's what I'm really good at. Ah, uh, not too bad at it. Eh, but not good enough. Bring up left out of the lodge. I asked them what it is. Plonk just opens his mouth and in a very soft elven woman's voice says, Poor, poor souls. This thing runs on souls? They both nod oh. enthusiastically. Any souls? They nod. They gesture towards all the machines around them, and then they hold up a soul coin. Yep. Well, one of them looks over towards you, Valifon, and says, "You want to see how it works?" I would. I for one would like to. So, no. <laughs> they hop down, and they lead you over to the driver's side door. They open it up. He points at he points at one at one at one lever. He says, "Wrecking ball." Points towards the back of the machine, and he pulls the lever, and a wrecking ball on a long demo what looks like demon bones stitched together and welded together comes ejecting out the backside with a wrecking ball hanging off the back of it. Hmm. All right. So Bill, Anacola, Valifon, whoever's looking around clonk would then point at another one and he kind of gestures up and he says clear the road 
explode in a dwarven voice, and he gestures for everyone to move away from the front of the machine. Um, grab, um, Lulu and move her out of the way. Also, also cover her eyes. <laughs> um, so he pulls another one, and he pulls another lever, and he says, Chomper. And the front of the machine literally opens in, like, a maw filled with razor-sharp steel and iron teeth and just starts chomping down. You can hear gears and other machinery wearing inside. And then he points up towards the top of the machine and says, Harpoons! And then Chuck and Clonk both reach out and grab a lever and pull it at the same time. A pair of harpoons shoot out from the front of it, impaling a red cap and a mad cap. <laughs> Would I know if fake creatures just regenerate and if they die in a different plane? Is that like I don't Anna, know if that's a thing. Anacola, you would know being of of the of the dark sorority that um, it's not uncommon for hags to strike deals with Archfey that basically get them unlimited supplies of servants like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they are dead forever. Oh yeah, they die. Okay. <laughs> they 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 did. <laughs> <laughs> Valathon is feeling so amazingly conflicted right now. <laughs> the artificer, the artificer in him is like, "Oh my god, this is amazing," but the 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 the, <laughs> the overwhelming <laughs> goodness in him is like, "This must be destroyed." <laughs> Wait until you see this. One of the Kenku says to you, <laughs> and then he holds up the soul coin, and then he points at a slot near the near the steering column near the steering steering wheel of this thing there's a thin slot that looks like it's for a coin and then right next to it is a round oddly shaped slot as well the kenku drops the coin the soul coin into it and you hear that same shrieking screaming sound again and a bit of reddish steam comes flying out from the slot that he drops the coin in and then he pulls out a key it appears to be a figurine about five or six inches tall of a pixie wings folded against her back and everything and he holds up the key valifon he holds it up to you just in time for you to see two eyes turn towards you and, no! and he oh takes the key God. and jams it into the ignition and turns it oh. <laughs> the machine roars to life and they all applaud everyone all the madcaps and the redcaps around are applauding at the at the fixing of this machine. Bill will join in on the applaud. Just a very polite, nice, soft clap. Valfon's gonna go be sick. <laughs> in okay, in fairness, there's no difference between the red cap and that pixie, other than the pixie's like you know petrified or something. But <laughs> if anything, she has a better. She's safe. She needs to be a part of the key for it to work. <laughs> right? Okay. But Chunka turns it off. It rolls down. You all can see a little gauge next to that little call next to the uh, slot that the coin went into. It appears to be about uh, about seven eighths full, like on a little red glowing indicator next to the slot. Is that like? I was about to say gas. Uh, wait, we have nothing like this. We've never seen anything like this before. <laughs> fuel. I would assume it's so. We understand right? fuel. Yes. Do we, though? Forges like... have fuel. Fires oh, have fuel. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. We understand fuel. Yeah, I was going to say if the coin would be like more of like a, a like a vending machine thing where like you can go get it afterwards or if it like and, gets burned up. <laughs> and Valifon has seen the, the flying ships of the gnomes when they visited. Hmm. So yeah, Chucka and Clonk are ecstatic. They thank you both very much, and they indicate to you that they are certainly going to tell Mad Maggie of all the assistance you provided. That's good. That is good. Uh, do you know... Uh, um, do... Go ahead. Do you know by chance where we would be able to come across, or purchase any uh soul coins uh i feel like it could be pretty useful down here um they say trade that you trade for them um a lot of people have them 
Mad Maggie has a bunch. She might be able to give you some if she's if she's happy with you. Um, is gold valued down here at all? Or no? Say only among certain circles. Are they in the merchant circles? The merchant is they say Mahadi. Mahadi likes gold. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. It's a name you're all gonna hear a lot. These I forget, or Kenku, they're just like shorter than average, right? They're not small. Right. But they're still like pretty short. Yep. Yeah, she'll pat him on the head. He kind of squints a little bit, wondering if you're being patronizing. See him kind of reach for a hammer at his side, and then Chuck goes like, ah, ah, ah. Clunk stops. <laughs> Yeah, she'll, uh, she'll pull away. Uh... Althea, seeing that Anacola is attracted, sneaks up behind her and tries to use precipitation on her. <laughs> <laughs> Make a stealth she, check. She, 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 <laughs> she cleans your hair. Just your hair. Oh. <laughs> yeah, stealth check. <laughs> oh. Uh, perception, perception from Anacola. Oh no, that's that's well below your passive. You're fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ten below. Uh, One of these times, it's gonna succeed. Yeah, I notice. I notice, and I grab the Kenku by the wrist and pull him in front of me. <laughs> so he's, so he's like sparkly clean now. It gets like an Elvis do. The hair just goes up. It's all greased up and stuff. <laughs> he looks over in the in the chrome of the uh, of the of the demon grinder and just like. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, oh, how no I thought it was like, oh how annoying and like kicks it oh, oh kick it right next to the chopper. <laughs> Chunka. Chaka. Chaka. Sorry. Is there some place here where I could get a few hours of privacy? I have some work I need to do. Bill nudges him and raises his eyebrows. Oh, yeah. They kind of look around and they, like, point towards, like, holes in the mounds of garbage and some of the some of the war machines. Okay. Um, I will go find one of those holes, um, and I'm going to begin working on inscribing a scroll. So first level scroll will take eight hours, um, but if I get interrupted, I can stop at any point and pick it up later. Okay. Um, in... Would you like to do that now? Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do that now. Okay. Uh, can I get perception yeah, checks from yeah. everyone else? I was going to say, Bill's going to keep looking around. Yeah, let's, let's get perception. The curse is lifted. Perception checks. The curse is not lifted. <laughs> all right. Bill, as you all move away from the uh, from the Infernal War Machine that you all just helped repair, um, those, there's two crows that were with Mad Maggie, the two crows that were sitting on her shoulders. They are staring right at you, whispering to one another, and then looking back at you, whispering to one another, and looking at Lulu. Shaking their heads, whispering to one another some more, looking back at you. Where are they at? They're right over here. A couple of crows standing on some on some rubble on some wreckage right here. This, this, is, good. this is crazy. I actually have something for this. <laughs> Can I ritually cast speak with animals and find out what they're saying? You can. What'd you All get right. on your perception check? Bill, with your 22, 22 perception, they are speaking infernal to one another. Oh, I well, don't know that one. In, in the meantime, uh, could I incite to see if they're, they're like regular crows? Presumably not, but if I'm no. assuming... 
Did someone there? And wait, did someone note about them? Did someone like mention them? Um, when they first walked up, you saw their eyes glowing red, and they were perched on um, on Mad Maggie's shoulders. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I want to see if I can tell if they're standard crows or if there's something off about them. Okay, I think a uh, nature like... check would be the better way to do that. Oh, okay. Ooh. I'm not good at nature. <laughs> I'm guessing anything that looks like a crow in oh. Avernus is actually an imp. Yeah, right, Anacola, with a 12, you would be able to... You would know that they are not average crows, especially the fact that they're kind of whispering to one another. You can't understand the language that they're speaking, unless you speak Infernal. I don't. Okay. You can't understand the language that they're speaking, but they are most certainly not your average crow, as they are whispering to one another. Bill will uh, shout out in a very intimidating voice, you two, get down here. They look back and forth, like they look around, look behind them, look towards one another, and they point at themselves, like, me? Talking me? At least we know intelligence isn't your strong point. Get your asses down here. They both hop off of their perch and fly over and land on the machine right here next to you, Bill. Chuck and Clonk have seemingly lost interest in what in what you all are doing, and they're just going about general repairs on the uh, machine. But they both land, and like, do you speak Infernal, Bill? Hell no, I speak common and orc, like a true <laughs> half-orc. <laughs> so, they land in front of you, and they start speaking to you in Infernal, and when they notice that they don't, that you don't speak Infernal, they switch over to common. And they say, very, very sorry, sorry to impose. Uh, it's not it's it's really none of our business. We shouldn't we shouldn't be involved in such things. What's sorry, going? very very it's sorry to bother you. Oh, yeah, it's it's nothing. It's just well, we we well, again. It's not it's none of our business. We should just simply stay out of it. It's nothing that we should bother you all with. I. See, Bill is just properly annoyed. He's like waving his hand in a circular motion, like, "Get it out or go away." Oh, you, you see, you see, you see that one, that guy right over there, and they point towards. They point towards a, um, towards a madcap. That's a, that's that's Wazik over there. You see him? It's Wazik. They point towards this madcap right over here. Red cap. That's a red cap. The little ones are the mad it's like caps. There are so many mad caps. I don't know which one. This one right here. They're pointing toward. You see, he, he, he's going to try to murder your little flying friend there. He's he's very obsessed with it. You see, he wants he wants to eat her wings. He says it's none of our business, though. We're very sorry to to impose upon you. We just thought that you should know him being your companion. I grab the uh, crow that's talking ah, and we start He immediately over. shifts into a little red imp, tail flinging around all over the place. Let it go! <laughs> March my happy ass right over. Oh there. god, what are you doing? <laughs> go ahead and make an yeah, athletics was... check for grapple. Are you still poisoned? It would have been till the end of his next turn, so nobody's still nobody's poisoned anymore. Thank god, oh, I was like okay. probably. Yeah, you have him. He's squirming all over the place. Like, oh god! Let me go! Let me go! I walk going. up to that uh, red cap and I kind of hold The other crow Valifon. is just sitting there right next to you, Valifon, with his eyes wide, just like, oh. <laughs> uh, holding the simp out in front of this madcap, I look at him and I'm like, tell him what you told me. Um, I told him that, that you're a very, very nice, very nice, handsome man. I love your mustache. That's, that's, that's... I uh, pull out my cleaver, spin it around in my hand. You only get one more try before I cut off your arm. Oh, my God. <laughs> and he says, he says, fine, make, a, make an intimidation check at advantage, please. <laughs> 16. Okay. So, it says... Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry he looks up towards you. I'm sorry I lied. I lied. 
Just, just, he's gonna kill us. He's gonna kill us. We're Mad Maggie's favorite little pets. Please don't let him kill. Please don't let him kill us. And Wazik's like, I'm gonna eat your eyeballs for dinner, you little bastard. He looks over towards you, Bill. He's like, that little suck up always got his nose halfway up Mad Maggie's ass. He's gonna make a good meal. That he is. I don't care what Maggie thinks. Can I attack this guy? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna hex him and then she'll touch him. Okay. Oh! Oh, jeez. Jesus. Okay, uh... <laughs> so that's so, 21, real uh, quick, 29. Bill, what do you see, what do you do as you see this, um, this, 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 uh, red cap in front of you suddenly just start to wither away and melt? <laughs> Wait, so what happened? So she, she reached into her bag, uh, he heard that they were uh, Mad Maggie's favorites, or she heard that, yeah, she heard that they were Mad Maggie's favorites and that this guy intended on killing them. Um, so she reached into her bag, pulled out um, one of the, the hands that she had gotten from that monster that they had fought in back on El Terrell. <laughs> she got like a dozen of those. Um, and she just yeets, yeets it, it. <laughs> And it, just, it hits him in the head, he gets knocked over, falls to the ground, and then just starts rapidly decaying. Okay, so Bill, you see all that happen, and the little squirming imp in your hand is like, Ah! Yeah, kill him! Kill him! Looks what in a good word for you! Please! Please don't hurt me! Kill him! But, like, Home Slice is dead, right? Like He's, he's, he's dying, he is not dead yet. My, my gut told me to take the imp and hit him with the imp, but that doesn't seem right. <laughs> I'll uh, take my cleaver and try and finish him off. Okay. Make an attack. 13 just hits. Thank all right. God. So I don't get to he's all that. just like decaying. Like, ah! And then bring your cleaver back and land it squarely in between the eyes. The two... The crow in front of you, Valifon, taking a look around the machine to get a good view of this. Let's add a woohoo! And the one that you have, Bill, is, ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Can you let me, let me go now, please, please? Put in a good word for us. Will do. You are the best, Major. <laughs> Bill will kind of take him and rub him around on the face of the dead. Madcap and then let him go. <laughs> it shakes itself off, gives its wings a good ruffle, and then takes its stinger and just like stabs the madcap a couple times and flies off. See, so Bill, Bill just starts mumbling to himself about how imps are awful and walks away. <laughs> Valathon, real quick, real quick, row beside him. Go ahead, Bill. There's like eight or nine other madcaps just watching you, and as you walk away. They're just, like, kind of staring at you, frozen. Do you acknowledge them in any way? I, I just kind of look at him and take my cleaver and wick all the blood off of it and put that away and keep walking. They immediately turn around and start just going about their business as usual. Did you say you licked it off? Uh, it wick it, like, you like, flick, flick it to go off. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, okay. Bill's not gross like that. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rub rubbing a guy against a, a dead person's face, that's fine. But licking blood? No, no, no. no. That's the line. No, no, there's the line a line. Is, there's, there's a, a line. line. There's a line. <laughs> Valathon will look at the, the crow is beside him and say in Infernal, You don't have to be a crow. Be yourself. Turns into an imp. His eyes, uh, ears 180 perk. from what we just had there. He says he's he responds to you in Infernal and says it's easier to present as something that outsiders are familiar with. This is Avernus. A crow actually kind of sticks out. He nods, obviously quite pensive. Strokes his little chin horn like it's a goatee. Is she good to you? 
Oh yeah, she barely makes us do anything. Now anyone else along the camp who would have need of our assistance? Since well, it seems we've not been called upon yet. Well, yeah, now that you mention it, Barnabas over on the other side of the camp, a bunch of the madcaps knocked out one of his teeth. He's been looking for it. Who's Barnabas? <laughs> You'll know him when you see him. I see. <sighs> so much for a scroll. Shall we go find Barnabas? He's missing what? A tooth? A tooth. Yep. Guess let's go find him. Oh, by other the side way. of camp, you said. That's what it said. Sorry, do you want to? Do you want to show us, or do I need to? Say yeah, we can take you over there. Cool. Starts escorting you up around this side. By the way, how are we doing on me on uh, using um using ghost as a mount? By the way. Oh yeah, we're getting close. Uh, we're definitely getting close. Um. Uh, could I have re could I retroactively make a roll for l our long rest? Sure. I think this would be the third. Yeah, and we did say we did say it was going to be three. So the next the next roll the next animal handling check you get a fifteen or higher. We'll go ahead and have ghost. Oh. There you go. Wait. Uh, no, it's dude, this is retroactive. Hey. There you go. Hello. What are these? things here. I've noticed several of them look almost like little like celestial things, circles. As you're passing by them, um Pins, the imp that's been following you around, um, he would let you know that him and his compatriot are named Pins and Needles. I like that. And Pins would let you know that they are um, silos for containing various things. He knocks on one and says that that one's Demon Icker. Knocks on another one and says that one's uh, that one's uh, Alchemist Fire. Very stuff like that. Alchemist Fire. Mm -hmm. uh, I was Alchemist Fire. What? Um. Uh, Bob, what do you use? De what do you use Demon Icker for? A few different things. It can be used to power um, to power the machines in a pinch. Oh, can it? We'll be sure to bottle it next time. So as you all turn the round the corner up there, you see a floating skull, green flame wreathing its floating mass, bright red eyes, and it approaches a pile of a pile of garbage. Oh, oh dear me, dear me, where could it have gone? Where could it have gone? And it just blasts a enormous fireball right here. Everyone's out of the range of that, right? I think so. Hopefully. Just barely, maybe? Good enough. Okay. So it singes some eyebrows, a little bit of burnt hair, completely engulfs a couple red caps that just disintegrate. And he goes over towards the wreckage and he starts looking around and you see him moving stuff around. Instead of like, because he can't pick stuff up, he uses a beams from his eyes to just like blast away chunks of rubble. That's him. That's Barnabas. Well done. What is he good for again? I will I assume that um, he has some relationship with our host. Pins would nod and say, yeah, yeah. He used to be a really powerful wizard. Used to be, being the operative word there. He's pretty, pretty much insane now. Mad Maggie keeps him around because every now and then he just gets these flashes of genius and he can help her fix the machines, make new weapons and stuff like that. But most of the time, he's pretty useless. Hmm. Is that what happens to wizards that die here? I don't really know too much about that. You can ask him. <laughs> uh... Barnabas? What's on? <laughs> ah. Floats up. Floats on over towards you. That is that is me. What can I what can I help you with, good sir? I am I am Valifon. Greetings, Valifon. I am Barnabas the Great. 
I hear you are a skilled mage. I was, yes. What brought you to such a state as this? Oh, uh, you see, many, 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 manicure. I don't have hands. Who are you again? <laughs> <laughs> Bill just rolls his I am Valavon. Greetings, Valavon. <laughs> I am... Have we met before? Yes, but in a few seconds we'll meet again. It'll all be wonderful. Are we... You seem to be looking for something. I am! I am! My tooth! It seems to be... Seems to be missing. You can see one of his front teeth is just, like, gone. There's a big gaping hole there. Green fire seeping in through it. Do you know what happened to it? I believe these little creatures... I believe these little creatures like, stole it. Like like that one there? Yes, just like that one there, except not that one there. Like the shorter ones, the ones with the black. So, ones. do you I still have your spell books? Spell books. 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 I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> I must find my tooth. Yes, you must. Do you think it's like? He needs that particular tooth, or could I, like, replace it with one of the other teeth that I have? Grubba! That was his name. That little red cap ran up, grabbed it, and ran off. I believe these little bastards have been using it as a good luck charm of sorts, passing it between one another. Yes. Hmm. Is this your tooth? And she'll pull out... She'll, like, reach into her bag and, like break it off of one of the skulls that are in there and just hand it over. It looks down at it, opens its mouth, and says, like, Lash here! Uh, I put it, <laughs> I put it in his mouth. It does not fit. Oh, no. As uh, I appreciate, I, think... I appreciate the effort, but it doesn't appear to be mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll keep looking. Balathon will draw his rapier and point it at this red cap that's right here beside him. Ah! What was the name of the one he mentioned? Grubba? Yes, Grubba. Grubba. And he points his rapier at this one and says, Where is Grubba? Speak quickly or die. Eat dirt. Kill him. <laughs> Game <laughs> on. So... Wait, you're killing this guy? Yep. You're you're the good one, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Not no more. Yeah, I know. What's happening to you? Oh wait. Yeah, you failed you failed the save. <laughs> <laughs> but yes. So you stab I'm gonna him, dark side. <laughs> and several of them begin to converge on you. So, this one does die, but just as a heads up, he was already very badly wounded. That's fine. And they all look around and Barnabas comes up. I don't believe that one was Grubba. I didn't think it was. But that one, if I point to the one by Crawl, is going to tell me where Grubba is. How about, how about we talk to <laughs> people? Uh, I may, it might be... Uh... <laughs> Seldom you'll hear it from me, but I think we should not kill random gnomes. He's got his knife out and he was just about to stab you, Anacole. He's like, yeah, puts his knife away. <laughs> <laughs> I'll it seems like... to be angering them. 
Althea just like sighs and like look, looks at all of them and like in like a very booming voice she like yells out red caps attention trying to get the ball like stands up straight as if like like in fear make it make an intimidation check Yes. <laughs> all of them right. snap to attention. They kind of look confused, not really sure why they've done this, but they all do. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, form two ranks in front of me now. Like yelling the orders to them. Okay. Um, we're going to need another intimidation check. Good God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she'll she'll point over to this like, one little red one here and be like. I hope you're paying attention because this is how it's done. It faints. <laughs> and, and she's like, "All right, brave red cap, no gnomes, dwarves, whatever you are." Uh, she starts like walking between the lines. There is one among you named Grubba who has something that I am searching for. And the one who finds this grubba and brings me the tooth that is in possess his possession shall be rewarded greatly by my, shall we say, esteemed presence. And whoever does it first will be rewarded greatly. Superiority over all the other red caps. You have exactly five minutes fail to do so and you face punishment do you understand before you even finish they all leap on this one and start tearing into him what poor grubba <laughs> also are these humanoids these are fey i believe damn it yep all right yes they all leap onto that one and just start tearing him apart you see honks of flesh flying up into the air oh god Althea, they Robot, bring you. Too. They bring you a pile of teeth. I'm just like, huh. I'm like, uh, okay. I'll say, take, take the teeth. Um, and be like, you have brought me many teeth, but you must find the correct one that fits Barnabas. Find it now. You have 30 seconds to sort through them and find it. Go. I say they just handed y'all Groba's teeth, is my guess. <laughs> that is exactly yeah. what they did. Wait. Oh. <laughs> I see. I'm like, okay, I'm like. Groba like, has a tooth. These, these, these are all. Okay, this, 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 is, <laughs> geez, this is good. But he should have another tooth on him. Search him for it. <laughs> they look very confused. No, no, she's like. She, uh, she, she takes the teeth like, I am very pleased with your offering, though, and you all have my favor now. However, there should be another tooth on his person. Find it. Barnabas comes up behind you out there. They kept it in a pouch, I believe. I suggest looking in the pouch. Whoever brings it to me first will be granted a reward. One of them kind of pulls a pouch out of his pocket, looks at it. <laughs> Looks at Grubba. Looks at you. All the red caps pile onto him. <laughs> oh god, I try to knock them off. Alright, may go ahead and uh for the mage hand. Anacola, go ahead and make a acrobatics or athletics check. Can I make an attack roll? <laughs> sure. <laughs> to just try and hit them off. Like, they try piling onto him, and I'm just trying to thwack them off with my staff. Okay, and what's going on with Mage Hand? I'm trying to grab the pouch. Okay, go ahead and make a sleight of hand check. Um, I'll let you add your int mods to it. There we go. I'm trying to, like, thwack them off of this guy. Okay. Okay, so plus... Oh, wait, that's the wrong oh. one. That's the wrong one. The sa It's the same hit to hit, but there's no necrotic. That's fine. The plus four to this roll. Okay. So ten. Okay. Valifon, your mage hand goes into the dog pile as Anacola is 
thwacking red caps off of the one that's getting dogpiled onto. Um, 10 is not quite good enough to get to it. Um, yep. And Nicole, you are able to thwack the ball away, and then he just hucks the bag at you. He's like, take it! He hucks it at you and runs away. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. I grab it, um, and then I disengage and run away. <laughs> they're, they're all chasing the one. Okay. Oh, no. <laughs> I have it. Stop it. It's a red cap beat red cap world. No. I'm just waiting for the red caps to swarm you now, Anna. I'm okay with that. I would. I, I don't like this. This is. I don't. Uh, Anacola, I, I, go, go ahead and make intimidation, intimidation or persuasion. Anacola. Okay, one second. Uh. Uh, yeah, I I command them to let him go. Hey, I'm bad at this. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep, with an uh, eight... They don't, they don't hear me. <laughs> no, they hear you. They hear you. They all just kind of stop. I'm going to have to step away for just a minute. Okay. They all stop and kind of look up towards you, Anacola. You have the pouch now, right? Yes. They all draw little daggers. Tooth. 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 Okay. Even when the I, one that uh, you were trying to help comes out along, pulls out his dagger. Tooth. Tooth. Can I walk up behind them and kind of draw my weapons and be very intimidating to, like, convince them otherwise? Go ahead and make an intimidation check. They stop their chanting. Start I start more. chanting. Teeth. Teeth. Good, because I accidentally didn't prepare any AoE spells today. <laughs> <Okay>. uh, <laughs> all right. I turn around. With Leia, that's exactly right. You're like a tooth army. Yeah, I have a little bit of gnomish blood on me and the bag of tooth. Um, and I go up to this motherfucker and I <laughs> take, I, I take, I reach in the bag. Can I find the tooth? <laughs> can I find like the tooth in the bag? Yeah, yeah, of course. It's, it's the only thing in the bag. Okay, I pull it out and I jam it into his mouth. Ah, what the? What? The, ah, oh, oh. I thank you, thank you, good sir. That is, that is much better. That is much better, much better indeed. You're welcome. <laughs> Althea is slightly disappointed, but uh, still proud of what what they did do and what they were willing to do to complete the mission. She'll go over to them uh, and have them gather around and be like, and, be like, and she takes um, like little pieces of her hair and like of her, of her red hair and like intertwines it with each of their hair or their caps or whatever. It says, "Anyone who dares to oppose your authority, that I hereby grant you." is an extension disobeying my authority. Therefore, walk as proud redcaps, knowing that you have done something great for me, and that, in return, power has been granted to you, even if it's just a minor amount for now. But I expect great things from you all. They're well all done. just like, power, power, <laughs> power, 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 <laughs> and they just start marching around together, chanting that with each other. All the ones with little red markers on them are, are the ones that you have uh, turned into your little red cap army. Perfect. Do you either die a warlock or live long enough to see yourself become the patron? <laughs> Do you I am satisfied now. Just waiting for Maggie to come out here and be like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> They're marching in like in flank. <laughs> oh god. Okay. I go after right now. <laughs> oh, how does Lulu feel about what I just did? By the way, <laughs> Lulu is basically walking around like with her like eye like her her elephant hoof hoof things like over her eyes like oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god oh my god. Oh trying not god. to look at everything going on around her. Oh no. <laughs> Alright, I'll pat her on the head. 
We need something from this guy's stall. Okay, this is what I'm here for. The the dirty stuff, you know? Okay. Anyways, it seems we found your tooth. Yes, yes indeed, I do appreciate it. I will be sure to inform Mad Maggie of your service. Much appreciated. Well, I don't know what all you all, but after all this uh, work and uh, raising an army, uh, I could use a short little rest. As she kind of like sits down, finds a place to sit down that's relatively comfortable. Uh, a short rest wouldn't be that bad. I agree with you. Bill's gonna go back to that infernal machine and kind of keep figuring out how to operate one of them. Nice. Okay. Uh, Malfaya, make a perception check, please. Hmm. Malfaya, you hear off in the distance, maybe about 30, 40 feet away from you, power, power, power. Power. One of the red caps is climbing the tallest, uh, the tallest silo in the place, mm -hmm. chanting "Power, Power, Power." Comes out here and starts walking his way across. Power, 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 and leaps off. Huh? Gosh. What the fuck just happened? Wait, one of them, okay. one uh, of the other ones approaches you and it's like, so, uh, what exactly is the power? I, uh, Grizzle thought it was flying. It's it, clearly not. <laughs> uh, your your power is to have influence over others through my influence. You see, so long as you obey me and my authority. You are given authority over others. I in doing control so. all. <laughs> Not my control. The ability to lead and intimidate. That is what you have been all be given. And together you will become known as the four red caps that gained my favor. It used to be five, but I had to cap out one of them. It's one of the side gives <laughs> <laughs> And... Your job is to increase the power and authority of this group and have underlings underneath you. Good luck with your mission. And um, whoever gets more underlings uh, gets promoted. You're building a red cap pyramid screen. <laughs> Question: um, Are we, are we still doing the one round death save thing? Like, uh, are we oh, still doing like you mean enemy? from no 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 no? Yeah. I had to okay, make a so full full blown addendum to that because of that Storm King game. That is not an official okay. ruling. So enemies make no death saves unless specifically stated otherwise. Okay. Anacola, would you like to try to save the one that jumps? Because you yeah, can totally do that if you'd like to. I'm gonna give him a good berry. <laughs> okay. Yeah, as he as he lands there like a fucking idiot, um, <laughs> and, like break, and then like breaks his legs and then dies. I'm gonna just reach out and pop a mushroom in his mouth and get him back up. Fucking idiot. She's gonna kick him as he walks away. He gets up, his eyes open. He looks up towards you. Power. She kicks him. Ah! Go to bed. You're just fucking idiots. <laughs> roll, roll that attack for how much damage you do. I have a negative one to strength, so it would be zero. Glorious. You heal it. He's climbing this thing again. No, he's not. He's going and hiding underneath it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my goal is the next time we come back here, or if we ever come back here, I just want to see like those four having like six or seven people under each of them, and then whoever has the most, I'm just going to like promote them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, God. <laughs> after a little while longer, Barnabas would drift off and then come back out to meet you maybe about 15, 20 minutes later. 
say that Mad Maggie's ritual is just about complete. It will be ready shortly. Um, she recommends that you all rest and regain your strength, as you will need it for the trial that lies ahead. And as you all go ahead and prepare to take your long rests, whatever you may want to do with that time, we're going to go ahead and call it a session for today. And when we come back, we will conclude our time here at Fort Knucklebone and hopefully safely recover Lulu's memories.